As promised, the CEO of Amcham TNT is here to touch base, give some post-budget analysis. And a man of his word, keeping his promise, he would have mentioned last week that once the budget does to settle, he'll be back with us to give us perspective. And interesting, a story here stood out to me, uh, Mr. Tawari, on page 16 of today's Guardian, where it says, Amcham TNT disappointed by lack of broad transformative initiatives in the budget. So, um, I guess we could start right there. I mean, of course, good morning, great to have you. I want you to elaborate because clearly you listen, you, you, you internalized, and you recognize that some of your recommendations and some of what you were hoping for was not really forthcoming yesterday. Talk good to morning, us this morning. JW. Good morning, sure. Good morning and good morning to all the viewers. Um, it, it's kind of hard to start there because we did also point out several initiatives or announcements with which we were pleased. Um, the, 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 the big challenge is that the government is trying to balance a whole lot of things, right? The rising inflation, the need to stimulate gas production in the short term, the need to diversify, and really the, the, the social strain that we're facing as a country. And so they would have announced a number of measures that by themselves are, are useful. I think what, what that statement, uh, which you quoted, refers to is that the coherence that is required to signal that the country is moving in a particular direction toward a particular objective and the link between the policy measures to achieve that and to free it up. We cannot spend our way out of this crisis. The government cannot pull everyone out of this crisis. So the government needs to provide critical support, which it's trying to do in a manner, however, that is more structural than economic. And, and what I mean by that is if they try to throw money at the problem, it will not work. While in the short term, you might need to put some money in people's pockets, the most vulnerable, what is required is removing the barriers so that there can be true growth. And the growth will only come through the private sector, through small businesses and large investments that will be inspired by confidence mm -hmm. that there is progress in the economy and that there's a holistic plan uh, for economic growth. So if you are adjusting the fuel subsidy for example then what are you doing on the public transfer me the public transportation end to make it less difficult for people to use public transportation and therefore well, be able to to reduce their own driving on well, their own well i'll say this i'll say this mr tawari i've seen recently where ptsc i mean they they could make the counter argument that uh ptsc they have they've gone down the road now of um going online you can now book you know book your 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 ride online um, there are new platforms where people could you know interact with them in that particular space i mean obviously if it's fully functional if it's always on time i mean that's left to to, to be determined by the folks who take the public transport but i guess in that regard because i mean even dr hussein would have mentioned that exact point um Yes, people are asking for us to carpool, for us to use public transport, but the average Trinbagonian really, there is this sense of reliability and if it will run on time all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't want to focus on that. I just use that as, a, as, as one example of how mm -hmm. policies work together. Yeah. Uh, but but the, the, point, the point that I'm making is that what, what we would like to see and, and I think this will also help the government. If there's a report on what was said, what was promised in previous governments, what has been achieved relative to those promises and where are we going? And what is the overarching goal? Where, where does the government want to take the country and how is it engaging stakeholders in that regard? So we know we have to focus on increasing gas production and oil production in the shortest possible time. But most of these things have a three to five year horizon. So we're still talking medium too. We know we need to diversify. 
but how are we doing this and, and, and what is the kind of society that we want to create? Now, within that, there were some very, very useful initiatives. So you have the developers hub by the Ministry of Digital Transformation. You have the FinTech hub. Okay. Then you have the tax credits for FinTech. Then you're addressing the regulatory environment for FinTech. So those things working together are great. Now, how do we bring that into the public sector? What are the timelines? And we hope that the Minister of Digital Transformation in his presentation will, will provide a little more details on the data interoperability framework. That is, how does government data, how is it shared? How is it linked? How do different ministries use the, the, the data from um, other ministries to make policy decisions? The national EID. So you want to give a $1,000 grant to to people to offset the cost of, of transportation and fuel price increases. All of that should be linked. So we should know Nero Tiwari is a recipient of government grants. You get your food card, you get your um, you get your CDAP, you get your, your, your old age pension, you get your thousand dollar grant. Okay, so Nero Tiwari got what he has promised. Nero Tiwari is alive. Um, he checks in ever so often. On the flip side of that, you could link that to things like are your children being taken to the clinic? Are they getting their vaccinations? Are they in school? And you link that. And, and this has been done in other places, um, such as Brazil, so that you link the social system. Mm. Another good initiative is the, is the sort of starting the shift in education back toward vocational education, remedial education. I mean, I'd like to see from educators what they think about the, the, the test but assessing numeracy and literacy at the end of form two, and then doing something about it for those mm. who are not where we need them to be yeah. or where they would want to be would be the key. It's not just about assessment, this is about remediation. But these are good things. Um, and so they must fit into the context of, okay, where do we want to be? Do we want to, to position ourselves we, to further develop the financial services sector build on that and, and develop the fintech sector, which there are signs that the government is moving toward and the TTIFC has been doing a lot of good work in that regard. And then broader the technology sector in agriculture, focus on the agri-tech and there've been some announcements and let's face it, there has been some progress around that, but we need to deal, still need to deal with things like Pradia, last knee and how easy trade facilitation is. And until we address the whole issue of trade facilitation and customs, every sector is going to be um, affected. Yeah. And then we need to look at the, the whole issue of the wage bill and how we, how we deal with that and how we, how we get to the point of consensus and how we find incentives other than just pay. Because we, the, the minister is right, we cannot now commit as a country to massive increases at a time where our revenue is very, very uncertain and volatile. Um, so how do we have that conversation? Because of course, if you have a working poor in the civil service, you're gonna have poor service in the civil service. Well, let me, um, I, mm -hmm. no, I was gonna, I was just gonna make mention because you mentioned pay there and I'm, I'm watching via the budget, certain government agencies now, uh, there's that thrust to move away from cash uh, to give people the opportunity to pay via debit or credit card. You would have spoken to me last week about that pivot to a cashless society. Uh, were there any initiatives at all yesterday uh, that, that sparked that particular interest that, that shows that we are going in that direction so there can be a greater ease of doing business? Yeah, um, so yes, I think the, the minister actually on that point um, outlined, I think it was about three or four different specific initiatives and some timelines so what we will do, we will track those. So I think he said that by the end of 2022, there'd be more e-payment options for the SEW, um, that there would be more e-payment options for, and, and by e-payment, I mean credit card online, right? Um, I think is what he, what he outlined um, for interacting with the licensing office and the Ministry of Legal Affairs so we will track those and see, but it was very good and very heartening that specific things by specific times were, were outlined in terms of payments uh, for government services. So in all, if you were to give that budget a rating, because I, I, I would have received you know, um, 
some interesting perspective too on, on uh, council this morning from Dr. Hussein. But based from your seat, from your vision, uh, from, from your lens, and what you know we can be, the potential that is limitless, that is Trinidad and Tobago, how would you say yesterday's budget would have been received uh, from the AMCHAM uh, side of things? Yeah, so again, from our perspective, we're really looking at the macroeconomics. And this is a, tif a, a, tough, a tough thing because people want to hear a budget and feel the positive impact in their pockets. And let's, let's make no, let's not skirt around it. They, there are a lot of people who are feeling the strain and whose lives are more difficult today than they were three and four years ago. Uh, because of the increases in the cost of living and um, some job losses during the pandemic. What we saw in the budget, we think, is an attempt to um, use stability. So, for example, the infrastructure, um, the PSIP has increased to $6 billion. Um, the attempts to restructure the water and sewage sector which is a, a, a major, major um, spend. The, the, the spend in the water and sewage sector was more than the, the uh, fuel subsidy last year, for example. So if we tackle that, then we free up some, some money. So all in all, I think it was a, a, a decent attempt to, to move beyond stability to lay the platform for growth, but without connecting all those dots and ensuring efficiency of spend, the intended policy measures are not likely to yield the results that are expected. And of course, one of the things that we did notice is there are a lot of in-progress items as opposed to completed items. So when I was with you last week, JW, I mentioned that we hope this is a year of delivery, not announcements. So it really has to be a year where ministries and ministers put their shoulders to the wheel and make sure that they are tracking progress to get results. And if they do that, we can, in fact, from these policy measures that were announced, it is likely, it is possible that we can have a platform for significant growth and benefit to the, to the wider society. But if we do not focus now there is also the flip side possibility that petroleum prices will drop and that the country will be in a worse position because our buffers are not the same as they were three years ago, that the country will be in a worse position eight, 12, 18 months hence. Yeah. And so it has to be a year of targeted, concerted effort toward delivery. Indeed, deliverable is very important. I mean, policy is one thing, but it's the political will that gets the job done. And I'll end by suggesting here from the very article, page 16, and again, get your copy of your Guardian today, TNT. You said that you're going to be looking to listen out for the concrete timelines in the budget debate. And I know you'll keep your eyes and your, your, your fingers on the pulse of everything that's happening. Always good to see you, Nirad, and we will touch base soon. Thanks for the opportunity. All the best. All the best to you. We'll take a very quick break. We'll come back. More budget analysis on the other side. But we put attention to Sweet Tobago to get perspective as to that allocation for the sister isle. See you soon.